Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Prima Facebook Live. My name is Frank Garcia, and today we will be creating a beautiful project. Um, I am just logging in here to see who is live. If you guys can hear me and see me okay, let me know. Um, I'm just trying to get my little station here ready for you guys. Good morning, good morning. It's a cloudy day here in California, so um, hopefully it's not too hot today, but if it is hot where you're at, um, you know, summer's here. So we're excited. Today we're going to be making this beautiful project here. This is an altered Fenneberg clock. Um, this is, of course, a pink clock. So if you guys um, love pink as much as I do, um, you guys will appreciate this project. This is a really beautiful clock featuring a lot of different mediums, a lot of different elements, and of course that beautiful mermaid um, that is just gorgeous and you're going to learn how to um, create this um, in no time. It's a very easy project, nothing too hard or difficult. Um, I really love <clears throat> the way this turned out. It's a really gorgeous uh, project. So we're going to get started here. So I'm going to put on my gloves so that um, I can get started. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. I'm going to be checking my comments here on the side to make sure I don't miss any questions, but there's also some moderators, I think, uh, on, and um, they're gonna be also, I'm sure, answering any questions. Good morning, everybody, good morning. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna actually start with our clock. So um, the clock itself comes in this brass color, and I actually left it that color so you guys could see the color it comes in. Um, it does come in that color, um, but we're gonna go ahead and paint it. Now, I didn't, I didn't wanna have you guys um, have to sit there and watch me paint so I did pre-paint some of it but I did want to let you guys know that um, that is the color of the clock it is this brass uh, metal color so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish painting it here um, so that it's completely pink now the color of paint that I'm using is just a regular cheapy folk art paint that is my favorite paint to use it is the seashell pink uh, color and you want to give this a couple of coats. Oh, let me get my brush a little wet. Um, you want to give this a couple of coats because um, the metal will not take on the paint uh, the first time. You kind of want to um, make sure that you give it a couple of coats before you um, completely start working on the other pieces. So I'm going to just give this one coat first and then kind of dry so that, um, you know, I can go ahead and create a mat on there. Hello, hello. Hi Candy, hello everybody from Kentucky. There's a lot of people on this morning. to my second coat and honestly this doesn't have to be perfect because it's meant to be distressed so you can definitely leave it um, a little bit more distressed I like to have it a little bit more mattified more pink hi Lynn how are you thank you guys for joining in and watching this early I know this is early for some of you guys so thank you for watching so early in the morning So I'm just giving this a second coat of the paint. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of, you know, whatever looks good to you is good.
All right, so I'm gonna let that kind of dry in its own here so you can see I kind of just added um, my layers. Now um, I can just go in and do one more back layer um, in the back here just to kind of make sure it's completely solid. But again, you don't have to do this many layers if you don't want to. It just depends on how matte you want this to look. And um, obviously, you know, you can all go in here with some gesso if you wanted to first and then paint it. But um, the texture of the clock is actually pretty nice. So it doesn't actually require gesso if you don't want to, but I didn't use it myself. So you can definitely do that if you wanted to. Hello? All right, so while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and take my palette knife and I'm gonna start working on the outside here, just kind of giving this a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my crackle paste. This is the white crackle from Finnebear. This is um, item 961503. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And you guys know white crackle obviously crackles. So um, we're gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a texture. So I'm gonna just go in randomly and start adding my texture onto my project. And I'm just gonna try to put this as thin as possible. I don't want it to be too thick. It is literally just enough to give us some texture. I like using a metal palette knife. It works really nice um, with this type of project because you can really get into some thinner areas here and it really spreads it out really nice and smooth. So I'm gonna add some right here, just kind of randomly. Now you can definitely add some in here into this little area and you can actually just spread this with your finger here just to kind of smooth it out, okay, like that. I'll just take this and just kind of add it over here on this side. And that's going to add a really nice crackling effect. Okay. I'm going to take some more and add it over here. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can definitely add some on here for example because whatever um, part you add this to it's gonna give you a little bit of a crackle effect so that always is nice for this type of project okay now once you kind of have the um, crackle on there I'm just gonna let it kind of air dry for a few uh, minutes um, because you want it to crack of course um, in the meantime what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our melange these are um, little pebbles that Finnebar has in her line you kind of see them right here they're little tiny pebbles and I'm gonna just take a couple of the pebbles um, and I'm gonna glue them onto my project so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these and I like that these are clear because they look like little water bubbles. So it makes it look really fun. And because it's, this is a water theme, it's kind of like an ocean theme, um, it kind of goes really well with the project. So I'm gonna add this right here. 
this side. I like the little, little baby ones because those are just so much fun. They're just so cute. I'm just going to add these randomly. Now you don't need to add too many. You can kind of see, you know, you want to add them in spots where, you know, you kind of don't have anything of interest. Um, so I'm adding it there. I'm gonna put a smaller one right here. Gonna take another one and put it over here on the bottom. Okay, just like that. And I think I wanna put another one on this side. Now I'm using um, just a thicker glue because I want to make sure that these stick. Okay, so um, I wouldn't recommend hot glue for these just because um, then you're going to have a gap between your um, metal and your pieces here. Um, and then I, did, I do want some of these to be pink. So um, while they're kind of drying, okay, I'm just going to take my brush. And I'm just gonna take some of my paint and I'm just gonna start um, painting some of these. Okay. And obviously the first coat is gonna look a little weird because you know, you're painting onto plastic. So you wanna just give this a couple of coats. So I'm gonna just use my heat tool to kind of mattify that. And remember you guys, when you put your crackle paste on there, you wanna make sure you let it dry a little bit before you heat tool it because then that way your cracks will show a little better. Um, I always like to wait a few minutes before I go in there with anything else just because, you know, it makes it look a little nicer. If you um, dry it completely when it's wet, it may not crack, so. Okay, okay. So as this is kind of drying, I'm gonna go in with my soft gloss gel. Okay, and I'm gonna put some on my plate here. And soft gloss gel comes in matte and gloss. This one is nine six two nine nine nine. And I'm actually going to be using this um, to add a little bit more texture to my project. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to go ahead and rub it in areas where I didn't get crackle. Okay, so for example, right here. Okay, and I'm going to be using um, some embossing enamel. Um, you can use um, anything you like. I, I like embossing enamel. I'm going to grab a little spoon here. Wait. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump a little bit of this on there. Okay, just for some interest and some texture. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that in different spots. Okay. Okay. 
And that'll just add a little bit of interest with the texture, okay? Now, soft gloss gel is really great for embossing powders because um, it really holds on to all those things. So I like using it for that purpose. Okay. Gonna move this out of my way. And I'm gonna go ahead and start drying this. And this is a good opportunity to start drying your um, your crackle paste. I don't know if you guys could see that texture. I don't know if you guys could see that, but that looks really beautiful. And you guys can see um, the beautiful crackling that's happening. Okay, now you can definitely leave um, some of these um, pieces here with the crackle the way they are. If you want to add it, uh, you know, let it kind of dry a little bit more, you can. So now that I have um, those things in place, I'm going to start putting some shells on here. Now the best way to do the shells is to kind of fill the shell with glue and then you kind of let it drop onto the project because um, it, there's really no other way to do this part. And you have to kind of move quickly because the shells get really hot. <laughs> so I'm gonna just put the shell there and just kind of hold it in place. Okay. And I'm just gonna pick some random um, shells here. Hello. Is everybody following so far? Okay, I'm gonna put that right here. And keep in mind, you kind of have to hold these in place for a little bit until the glue kind of drops. Otherwise, they'll start to move. Ah. Okay. And they do get kind of hot, so you have to be careful not to burn yourself. Yeah, you know what, um, I've done different things with the shells before and I've tried um, putting the glue on the edge but I hate seeing the glue. So this way what happens is the glue will drop and then you'll, you won't see the glue as much if you kind of, you know, do it this way. It, it'll just kind of stay underneath um, unless there's a big gap on the shell. So it kind of just helps to kind of minimize, um, you know, you burning your fingers <laughs> like I'm doing right now. 
<laughs> okay, so I'm going to take another shell. I'm just going to put it right here, actually. I'm going to use that little pebble as a little anchor. I'm actually going to move this over to the tab. And um, I did pre-paint a lot of these. Um, these were originally a little bit different color and I painted them white. But you can definitely use shells that are already, um, you know, natural. Um, but I just wanted to kind of keep the project consistent. So I did um, paint mine white. Okay. I'm just letting that kind of dry. Now I did want to add a couple of little ones, so I'm going to take a couple of little shells. And the little shells are a little bit easier just because they're smaller, so it doesn't require as much, um, as much glue. So for example, you could just kind of stick it on and it'll just kind of stick on. Um, I'm going to actually put one right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think that would look so cute. And these are just little conch shells. That is looking very cute. Hopefully you guys are following along. I think I may need a shell right here, just a little one. So I'm gonna try to do that with one hand. Now you can see some of the crackling already on there. I don't know if you guys could see it, but it looks really pretty, the texture and everything. I love the way the crackle looks on projects. It just looks very, very pretty. It adds a really nice effect to all of your mixed media work. I think that one's gonna hold on there for just a sec. All right, so now that we have this in place, okay, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the mermaid. So let me just kind of lift it and kind of have it stand like this a little bit while I do that. Just don't want that shell to fall over. There we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and work with our mold. Um, now the mold here, I already did it previously. Um, this is the um, mermaid mold that we have. And this is the redesign with Prima mold. I don't have the number in front of me because I made this yesterday, but it does come with these little reefs. And then you also get this reef right here. It's a really cool reef. And then the mermaid itself. And then you also get these two little reefs. Now what I did is I went ahead and poured my resin and while it was soft I went ahead and twisted the tail. So this is a very important step because the tail is actually going downward um, and you want it to kind of go up because otherwise it's going to stick out of your clock. So I went ahead and uh, while the resin was soft I took it out and I you know bent it to the top. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. So I'm going to take my clock and I'm going to just flatten it or flatten the little foot. And I'm going to go ahead and position her. Now she's going to go right here. Look at how beautiful she looks already. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue her onto the spots where I, you know, she touches the clock. So um, I know it, it'll be a little bit difficult to see, but um, basically what you want is you just want her as inside the clock as possible. 
So I would say, um, like for example, right here in her hair, in her head, um, right here on the tail, those would be good spots. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm just gonna add um, some glue onto the front, into the flat sides where I know she's gonna touch. So again, I think her hair, her head, so a little bit on here. Okay. And then I would say her tail right here. It's gonna be good. And this glue is gonna anchor her right there. Okay. Perfect. Hope you guys get to see that okay. Now that she's in place, I'm going to start working um, with a couple of other things. Uh, now before I do that, I'm going to take my my reef here. And this one's actually going to go inside. So I'm going to actually build a little seam here inside so you can kind of see where it'll go. So it'll kind of go like about right there. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of carefully flip this over and I'm going to try to glue this in there. So, um, there is no, um, easy way to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue on there and hope for the best because it doesn't really, um, have a space inside to glue. Does that make sense? It's honestly just like a little, a little peekaboo if you may. And I'm just going to go ahead and anchor it with some more hot glue and kind of let it dry. So I'm just going to let that kind of dry a little bit. While you guys are waiting for that to dry, I did want to mention this does come with a back lid. I went ahead and already painted it pink um, so that... Um, it's ready to go, so when I wanna close my project, um, and there's actually gonna be some paper here. Um, we're gonna do that in a little bit. But I'm just gonna cool this off a little bit so that um, I can work on the front. And this hot glue is very hot, so be careful when you guys are working on a project like this because you can burn yourself, especially with the shells, because the shells, the shells are kinda like glass. They kinda work like glass. Um, you know, they are um, very, you think it can get very hot, so just got to be careful. Is everybody following along? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, so I think, let me show you what that looks like here. So you can kind of see the reef right there and just ignore that hot glue because that's going to get covered up anyway but that's kind of what it looks like um, we can see the glue there just kind of holding it in place and as that dries or begins to dry it's going to um, keep that in place so i'm going to go up here again and i'm going to start working with my shells so now that i have my stuff in place i'm going to start working with my conch shells so these are gonna be the ones that are gonna cover up all the little mistakes there. So, and this is kind of like, honestly, my favorite part because I love putting these on. They look really great on projects and um, they're really great fillers. And I love the tail right here because you can actually um, work out where the tail is. You can kind of work um, and put stuff in between, kind of tuck it in. So that's what I'm gonna do here. It's almost like you're just assembling a little home for your mermaid. And I always tell everybody, this is almost like a little puzzle. You just kind of have to find a way that looks good. I think I'm gonna need some more hot glue here.
got some more right here. And it's a little nice base for you to work on this um, this sort of area here because you can fill it in. And that's why the reef is important in the back so that it can kind of hold everything in place. Okay, and so far this is kind of what we have. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's looking very pretty. I can actually add this right here on the top. Okay, and then I do want to add this here. I just think that she needs to have a little shell on her tail area right here. Okay. And then I do want to add a shell to her hair right here. I think that'll look very pretty. Now this depends how much you want to add on here. I mean, obviously you can go crazy with the shells, but um, you know, I like adding them. They just add a really nice element. So I'm just gonna add one more here. this little sand dollar right here that looks very cute right okay so far so good it's looking pretty good all right so now I'm gonna just kind of get rid of these little blue strings And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our soft gloss gel. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and um, grab this. Let me actually move my shelves here out of the way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add this and kind of put it in between my shells. A little bit right here, a little bit right here. And I'm gonna take my art stones, and these are um, nine six four six seven two. These are mega art stones, and these are gonna be used to fill in, to add a little bit of texture between the shells. So I'm gonna take my plate, and I'm gonna go ahead and scoop them. So, and then I'm just gonna add them in between where I put my gel. Now, not all of them are gonna stick, and that's okay. That's why you wanna have a plate, so that anything that doesn't stick, you can kinda add later, after you kinda do your initial 
run. And these kind of get everywhere, so you kind of have to have something to catch them off. But um, you'll see right now that not all of them are going to stick. But actually, most of them did stick, which is great. Now you can always go back and add more. So I'm going to take my brush again, take a little bit more gel, and just kind of figure out if I need any more. So I'm going to actually take some over here in the back where my reef is. And I'm going to add some right there. They look wonderful, and they just add a lot of nice texture. I love the way they look. So I'm gonna attempt to put these back in the jar. Okay. Uh, so now I'm gonna just go ahead and give this a quick dry. So now I'm going to start working with, um, actually before I do that, I'm actually going to go back with my gloss gel um, in a minute here. And I am going to start working with my paints. So I'm actually going to give our mermaid a little outfit. So I'm going to take a little bit of paint and I'm going to actually have my water here nearby and I'm going to dip my brush in the water and just start painting her body here. So I'm actually gonna go in here like this. Okay. And I'm using Butterfly Spell Sparks. This paint works wonderfully with water. It just, it makes it look really pretty. I mean, look at how gorgeous the sparkle looks on that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and I'm gonna take my Mermaid Sparkle, and this is item 964085, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, and I'm gonna let them kind of blend, like kind of like watercolor, okay? You can see how pretty that looks. I mean, they literally look like mermaid scales. Now, the reason I'm using water is because I want it to be a little bit more runny and not so solid. I want to see a little bit of that, um, a little bit of that um, texture of the mermaid resin. So, I'm gonna add a little bit more over here on this side where her tail is. And now on her tail, I'm going to actually mix. So I'm going to take a little bit of the pink and just kind of go in there like this. So take a little bit of that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the green or the mint. And I'm just going to go ahead and pass it along like this. And that'll give me a really pretty kind of gradient on there. That's really beautiful. And then you just kind of want to dry that. You guys can see how pretty that looks. I mean, that's what the water does. It kind of adds a really beautiful flowy look, okay? 
Now I'm gonna go back with my brush and I'm gonna actually put some on the shells now. So by using the water, I am just letting it kind of drip in different spots. And this will allow the paint to just kind of go into all the nooks and crannies by just kind of lightly touching it with water. And I'm actually going to do that on all the shelves here at the top as well. I'm just going to add a little bit of color. It's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? I love the way that looks. So I'm going to go now into my pink and add a little bit of my pink color. And you can't really be afraid to do this. You just kind of have to do it. Does that make sense? I know a lot of people that sometimes get worried about it looking kind of weird, but you just kind of have to do it. I mean, it just, it just, um, you can't be scared of color. Um, the worst that can happen is you just have too much and then you just go back and add a little bit more, add some flowers, add something to cover it up. I never really worry about having too much, but I do do it in a little bit more of a from like sections so the sorry I don't even know what I'm trying to say here but um, what I mean is I do it in little spots so that it's not too much does that make sense my speech is being impaired this morning <laughs> okay so that's looking pretty nice there Now, what I want to do now is I want to just kind of take my brush and my skinny brush and I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of a splatter here. I think she's looking pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this real quick. here so 
I'm going to take a little bit more of my paint and just add a little bit more on here. Now you can definitely go in with different colors. I know in the sparks line there is another color called um, Magical Pond and that color is actually gorgeous. Um, it's a really beautiful blue. Um, I just am obsessed with these two colors. I love them. Um, I think they're just gorgeous. Um, but you can definitely use any color you like. Um, the Magical Pond color would also be very beautiful here. And I just really just touch the stones um, ever so slightly to just give them that really nice touch of color. You don't want to do too much because then it's going to start to look like mud, but yeah, that's just the perfect touch. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my soft gloss. And I'm going to just take this with my brush. I'm going to need a flat brush. And I'm actually going to start with her hair. I'm just going to go ahead and put this right here. And I'm going to actually um, put this on my plate. And I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle to her hair. I'm using um, this glitter. about that now you can see the glitter on her hair look at how beautiful she looks ah she's gorgeous i love her so her hair is full of sparkle now i'm gonna go back here and i'm gonna add a little bit more of the gloss and i'm gonna just take this and add it on the, some of my shells And that's going to go ahead and cover up any gloss gel that's left over that maybe didn't get any stones or anything like that. You can kind of see how stunning that looks. I'm going to add a little bit more on here. You can see it even goes on the tail. How gorgeous that looks. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Gonna move this out of the way here. Okay. So she is looking pretty good. Um, just some final touches here. We're going to go ahead and add another shell. 
Um, I'm actually going to try to glue it right here. So, wish me luck here. Just going to try to put my glue on there. Hopefully, it doesn't get everywhere. Uh, right there. And what I wanted to do with that is I wanted to um, have a spot for me to put a pearl. So I'm going to take um, a big pearl that I have in my little stash here. And I'm just going to put it right there so it looks like she's holding the, the pearl. Does that make sense? So I'm going to just take my glue. And I'm just going to go ahead and have her hold it. Right there. How's everybody doing so far? Is everybody okay? Does anybody have any questions? I know this is a lot, and honestly, this is a really big project. Um, but it, it comes together really easily. I know when you break it down in these steps, it kind of looks overwhelming, but um, it's actually a really fun project that um, comes together very quickly. I'm gonna have to add a little bit more glue to this pearl so that it holds in place, because it does not want to cooperate with me. Now I'm gonna take my pearls three. These are my memory hardware pearls. Um, this is item number, I think it's uh, 995836, I think is the number. And these are the kind of like more tropical gilded mix, okay? This is a really nice mix of pearls, I love these. I'm gonna use the champagne ones and I'm just gonna add some pearls in between here. Okay, and I'm actually going to um, put some on this edge here. And I'm actually going to tilt this this way. So that they stay in place. I'm gonna actually line them up right here. And this is just going to close the gap right here. Um, I'm using the larger of the pearls. Remember that in the pearls you um, have different sizes. So that's going to obviously give you a lot of versatility when you're um, working on your project.
think he maybe would have said one more. What do you guys think? Kind of barely fit, so we made it there. And then, I mean, we can definitely keep adding pearls. I mean, I love adding pearls to everything, but I think we kind of need to stop here. I think there's plenty on there. I'm gonna put one in here. And this is kind of what it looks like right now. What do you guys think? I think it looks amazing. Now you can definitely add more things to this. I mean, obviously there's more on the actual project itself. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of gloss gel in the shell. And just add a little bit of glitter in there, just for fun. So that doesn't look so empty. And then if you wanted to get a little more fancy, um, I do have my artisan powder and I'm actually gonna grab a dry brush because artisan powder works best when you use a dry brush. And this is um, the Trinamon Patina color. This is item number 992903. And this, um, of course, if you've never used um, artisan powder, it's great for antiquing. So I'm going to actually add this to where I put my crackle. So I'm going to just grab a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of a color here. And I'm just going to rub it. And see how that kind of gives you a very nice antique effect without it being too overwhelming? I love it. It's just a, a completely matte powder. It'll bring out details on a lot of things, especially when you add crackle. Let me show you this right here. Look how that looks. Doesn't that look beautiful? It just it just brings out details that you might have not seen, um, especially because they're very fine details. It just adds that perfect touch. Okay. Okay, so now that we have this part kind of completed, um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the other projects or the original project so you guys can see what I did at the end. So I did take this piece of paper here. This is the Punta del Monaco from my Capri collection. And I went ahead and traced this right here so that that can go on the back here, on the back side. So I'm gonna take a pencil. And I'm gonna trace this right here with my pencil. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out. And this is what's gonna go right here. I'm gonna take my glue.
I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this right here. And this is gonna be my back cover. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put this inside of here. Now, before I do that, I'm actually gonna take this flower. This is my uh, flower here. The blue flower is from 632045. And I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this in an area where I could see it in the project. So I'm gonna just kinda eyeball it. And it's gonna go right about here. Just gonna fluff it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that cover back in the clock. And these little clips hold it in place. So you're just gonna wanna push these in. And then that's how you have your flower there. Do you see that? And now you can obviously decorate this with a little bit more paint. You can add some tassels. But the final project is going to look like this. Okay. And um, I added a little bit of tassels up here. And actually on my original clock, I actually have a light. So when you have it at night, you could kind of see that there's a light in there. Doesn't that look beautiful? And that's it. There you have it, you guys. So this is my altered clock. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it so much. Um, I love creating this project. It's just so much fun. It's so beautiful. And it's honestly a very easy project. It's, it'll come together very easily. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully you guys join us for our next live. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And I'll see you guys on our next live. Bye, guys.